Welcome to Heart Home Community's most recent Baldwinsville Community Update. I'm your host, Shelly Hoffman. Hey, Mayor. How are you doing today? I'm doing pretty good. It's beautiful out. We've had a nice day today. Snow is melting. I guess we're going to have three or four days in a row of in the 40s, which is Mm -hmm. nice. But we shouldn't get fooled because there's more snow coming. And March sometimes can be, you know, come in like a lion and be very nasty. So let's be happy with what we got right now. And we're killing we're killing mosquitoes in their nests and we're hopefully killing some ticks with all this cold weather and that's all I'm I got. Because mosquitoes last year, especially up like in the Cross Lake area and in my, my I'm sure my backyard, they were miserable. So you just made my whole day thinking that maybe we were killing mosquitoes out there. It might have been the worst mosquito season I can remember as, as an adult. Yeah. Um, you know, when you're when you're, I didn't consider myself an adult when I was 20, 21, 22, I was still acting like a kid and you don't pay as much attention. But when you get a little older and you sit still more often outdoors Mm -hmm. and all this, they're all around your head and on your ankles. And so let's hope. I I think I ate some at Cross Lake walking from the pole barn to the A-frame. I'm pretty sure like I went to say something and they just went right into my mouth. It was just kind of explains things a little bit, right? (laughs) <laughs> well, just so you know i i had a, one of those moments again last night where i said i really don't know if i got anything you know it's sort of in between seasons type of stuff and you know the big events are kind of gone the dining weeks the the uh the big chill some of that stuff has happened but I got a phone call the other day asking me about the Memorial Day parade. Is it a go? I double checked with the chief. He said he's based on what's going on around. So no reason we couldn't have the parade as as usual. Nice. So that's exciting that on uh, Memorial Day, we our parade will be back as you know, like it always was. Um, if you know people that are interested in getting in the parade, um, contact Village Hall. They'll contact you with the committee. Uh, Linda Ross and her husband, Tom, uh, kind of are in charge. Uh, but but Ruth Seco from our board is on the committee. <clears throat> Excuse me. <clears throat> Rosemary Johnson, who used to be one of our clerks uh, for 75 years, I used to tell people, she'd say, I'm not even 75 years old. How can I be a clerk for 75 years? Um, but she's involved. Um, and Lieutenant Lockwood is on that committee obviously, because they need to know anything they want to do. They got to make sure that it meets safety requirements and so on. So they're, they're getting started. They're excited. I hope the people in the village are already starting with them. We still have Valentine's Day coming up. We have the Super Bowl on Sunday. Um, those are things that the village has less input, except Valentine's Day, be nice to your sweetie. You know? Yeah. Well, and I I can say from a business standpoint that you have stuff happening at um, like BU Nutrition, Sweet Dreams Candy Shop, Fashion Rescue. The businesses, I mean, really are taking, I'm going to call it Galentine's Day, but obviously it's Valentine's Day. But there's a lot of things out there for even just girls to get together and and do. I know Rural Princess, um, they're going to be at the candy shop this Saturday. So you can get candy and see some princesses. So it's just you know, again, we talk about it all the time. There's just, I mean, I know it's not village, but you, the village itself is very supportive of all the, what the businesses have going on. And they just, this year, they're just coming out strong saying, let's, we can do things, let's do them and let's do them safe. And if you're looking for something to do, there's always something happening in one of the businesses around here. And the, and the businesses have made it easy because they're so creative. Mm-hmm. You know, they, yeah. they don't just sit there and go, well, what are we going to do? People don't, treat Valentine's Day the way they used to. Well, make it fun for somebody and maybe they will. And it looks like different people try that and it seems to work. Um, I know our florists are very busy. I'm sure the orders have started to trickle in and people will wait till, you know, Monday morning to place their orders and hope they can get there by noontime and wonder why they can't. But um, so we do have some things going on and spring is like just over a month away. Um, so, you know, there are things to look ahead towards the SU basketball team, four straight, trying to give themselves a chance maybe to get in the tournament. 
So, you know, it's something to look forward to. Um, I want to get some village business out of the way because we have a lot of stuff pertaining to village government that people should be aware of. Just to let pe remind people that taxes will be coming, village taxes will be coming out. I know I'm not supposed to say bad things, but, but you realize that village taxes made sure your streets were clear for snow and your brush got picked up and that type of stuff. So that's really a good thing. Yeah. Um, there, you should get them. What the heck? Oh, someone's on my screen. I, I think I hit the mouse by mistake. Um, where am I? I've lost, lost my train of thought. Um, get back. Uh, the village taxes go out when? When should we anticipate? Taxes should, people should have their taxes on or by March 1st. Okay. They have the whole month of March to pay them without a penalty. After April 1st, you pay a penalty. Um, it's, it's not huge, but, you know, money's money. Um, you can pay it several ways. You can mail in. You can use the drop box outside the, the door. It's very safe. And for people who aren't familiar with it, Village Hall is connected to the police department, and there's police cars parked right there in, within sight of the drop box. So if you're worried that you're putting it in there and it may not survive, you have to be pretty brassy to go and try to knock off a drop box next to the police station. Um, and we, you know, we have cameras all around the building, so that that's pretty safe. Um, you can do it online at ongov.net um, slash etax, etax. Um, so there's you can you can go to the door, ring the bell. They'll let you in. You come in, pay your taxes, get your re receipt stamped, and you're all set. So um, that's something to not necessarily look forward to, but to not, if you don't see them by March 1st, to check with the village and, and see if maybe there's a way to get a second copy or whatever. Because uh, ignorance or saying you didn't ever get a copy is really doesn't stand up in court. Um and so we're kind of dependent on everybody to know taxes are coming. This is a good reminder. Um, also, the election coming up um, March 15th, it, um, you can get absentee ballots now. Contact uh, Village Hall if you need an absentee ballot, um, and they'll send it out to you. Um, as, all I'm aware of is that there are – there's. Uh, one mayor candidate and, and three trustees for for mayor seat and three trustees positions. Um, people will say, well, there's not a lot of reason to get out and vote, except that when you get out and vote, it's an affirmation that you're paying attention to what the village is doing and that, that the people you're voting for um, get your support. So I'm asking people to vote and, and let's get a significant number. I'm, I don't expect 3,000 people to show up to vote when there's no contest. But if we could get a couple hundred, 300 people to vote, um, it shows at least that there's interest. Um, I think we've done some good things in between speaking of the board and looking at taxes. We dropped the tax rate by 4% 4, 4 this year. Uh, people should hopefully be pleased to see that their village taxes didn't go up because of the village. If they went up, it's because their assessment went up just like crazy. And we have no control over assessment. So well, I think I think that's a good point to make. Um, you know, Linda chimed in saying the village taxes haven't increased. So I'm glad you said that because I was going to bring that up. But um, but I know before I got into the industry that I'm in, I didn't always like pay much attention. I just looked at the dollar amount that I had to pay. You know, so you see the assessment and you see an increase, you assume that the increase is because the village increased their taxes. You're not really paying attention to the assessed value. Some people do. I don't want to speak for everybody, but I think it's a good point to say that the rate that you charge per assessed value, correct, is what you're saying has gone down. Right. It's just if your assessed value went up, there's nothing um, you can do about that. Right. If your house was assessed for $100,000 before you would have paid uh, $750. $52. Now you'll pay 719. But if your house is now $200,000 assessment, it's going to be double that. Right. Yeah, you know, so, and, but we don't have any control of that. You have to go and fight with the, uh, the assessor and explain why your house 
shouldn't have gone up so much. And we had one time before I was mayor, so it was, had nothing to do with that, <clears throat> where we challenged it and we got it lowered. And they, they didn't lower the entire amount, but they cut like in half what they had raised us. And so it felt like it was worth taking the time to go and, you know, we took houses that are similar to ours in the neighborhood. Mm-hmm. And some of them have finished basements, um, stuff like that. And uh, they bought the argument and you know, we were able to save a few dollars. So, and I know other people who've gone and argued and, and don't win. Um, and well, know. you don't, you don't know if you don't try and with the, right. the market that we're in and the market value increasing assessment, you know, it's all, it's all related. It's not just one little piece of it that creates the, the, the wave effect. But. You're absolutely right. Um, just a few other things. We do have some openings for the planning board and the zoning board. They're still open. Um, we do have one candidate for the planning board who was watching our board meeting Thursday night uh, live on Facebook and saw that we were talking about positions, sent a message to um, to us, and we are able to address it on the air, uh, asking what the qualifications were. And basically, the qualifications for being on the planning or zoning board are you have to live in the village so that... We, we don't require a degree. We don't require experience. Now, if, if we have two people and one of them um, is a contractor and understands contracting, somebody else maybe is a teacher who wouldn't understand that as much, we might lean towards the contractor. But we also have an, a goal of being diverse as far as we'd like a teacher and we'd like a business person and we'd like an engineer. And we, you know, so that every area is covered we will get the most well-rounded opinion on things. So if you're interested in getting involved in the village um, planning board, zoning board, the p- positions are open, contact the code office. <clears throat> Greg Humphrey will talk to you. Does a brief interview to get, get a sense of why you want to do it, what your background is. And uh, we go from there. So those positions are available. It's a great way to get people's two of our two of our trustee candidates this year. One was planning board, <clears throat> one was zoning board. So it's a good way to get started. Um, let's see. So we mentioned that. We mentioned the election. I don't think I mentioned the mailbox story the last time. I think you did, where the mailbox was knocked over and before okay. we did. Yep. Okay. Yeah. I couldn't remember when that happened. It might have been that day. It was that day, I think. Okay. Yep. So We'll you can right. tell it again. I like the story. That's but. where somebody's <laughs> mailbox got knocked over by our snowplow. I got a, a text message from the resident saying, is there anything they can do to put it back or give us a new one? And I said, I think if you look at our newsletter, which is available on our website, baldwinsville.org, or on our Facebook site, it says we will put up a mailbox. It won't be a fancy one. It's just a plain metal mailbox. But if we do it, we'll fix it. So he said, okay. And you know, if it's not what I want, maybe I'll get a a different one in the spring. And so, but he said it was going to be a problem for him to try to put it up in the wintertime because the ground was frozen and things like that. So I said, well, I'll contact the DP. You should contact the DPW, but I'll check with Chuck McCall. So I sent Chuck a message. He sends it back. Yep. We will replace it. Bing. I get a message from the resident before I've had a chance, Chuck's had a chance to tell anybody, they were here, the DPW guys were here and they replaced my mailbox. That was quick. I think now I'll pay my village taxes. Ha ha. <laughs> so now I go back to Chuck. I said, it's already been replaced, Chuck. He said, all oh, the guys, when they came in, they said they knocked two of them off in this morning and they were jumped in a pickup truck and went back and fixed them. So before word could really get out, to the head of the DPW to have somebody go do it. They had already done it. And the, the landowner who was concerned is replying to me that basically 10 minutes after he contacted me, it was fixed. And I said, I had nothing to do with it. I mean, it was, that's the way the DPW operates. So it was a great lesson. Again, what you get your, for your taxes, that kind of service. Hey, um, speaking of the DPW, I have a question for you. Okay. 
So the other last couple days, actually driving through the village, they have, um, first off, I want to know the name of it, which maybe you have to ask Chuck, but they have like a snow scooper picker up or it closes it up. And then they put snow in the back of a truck. Where is that snow going? So basically what I think they're doing is widening the road because we've had sure. so much snow um, and cleaning it. And I don't know why I've never seen it in the past, but I've seen it two times uh, in the last week where the DPW has been out doing that. Where does the snow go? Because you can't put it in the water. I know no, that. No, right? it, goes, it goes down on Meadow Street. They, okay. If you go over Grove Street, if, if you cross the bridge, Grove Street is the street before St. Mary's. Go down there on the meadow and down in that area, there's we own a lot of land in there and it's just vacant so we can put snow. Again, we used to put it in the river years ago. Um, we, us kids used to go down and, at, uh, by Mercer Park and watch them come down with the dump trucks <laughs> and dump the snow, which would probably a testimony to the excitement of our lives. <laughs> That, that that was exciting. But, you know, when you're 12, 13 years old, it's kind of cool. And it would kind of sort of disintegrate into the water. <clears throat> so now they put it down on Meadow Street where it's out of the way. And they do it mostly in the business areas. They tried to do it before the big chill because they knew there'd be a lot of people in. And then they knew the dining weeks, there were more people downtown. And they tried to keep the, the business people pay the same taxes as residents do. They don't get leaf and brush pickup because they don't have any leaf and brush. So the snow removal type stuff is, is there what they get extra. Gotcha. And you may, you probably wouldn't notice, but I live in Candlewick and then we have a couple of uh, dead end type cul-de-sacs. They go down and clean them out because it's hard when you're going around the circle and the snow drops off and those things, the, the grassy part, like in the middle, for instance, yep suddenly grows quite big and the street area is diminished. So they go down and I've seen trucks going by full of snow and they're, they clean up the circular areas. And it's nice for everybody because you do get frustrated with the snow, but all of a sudden to have your street area cleared out so you can move around better really means a lot to people. And uh, so it's something our DPW has done quite a while. And, uh, Chuck is particularly, you know, cognizant of, of the impact that it has on people, to, especially the businesses, to keep those areas clean, keep the parking spot. Because otherwise, I can remember years ago when the snow would have bad snowstorms, there would be areas on, on the, like Oswego Street west of the stoplight where you couldn't park on the street because there was three feet out of snow about five feet high. If you parked, if you parked you'd be right in the traffic lane. Um, so it, it's a great service to the businesses and, and hats off to our guys. Um, let's see, we've mentioned that. I don't want to get too far off track and lose track. So Greg Humphrey would like me to remind people you are required to keep your sidewalks clear. You have 24 hours after a storm to get them clear. Nobody expects you to be out there five minutes after a 15 foot or 15 inch snowfall. And, and being out there and getting rid of it all in, in four minutes or something. We, we give you the benefit of the doubt that you had something else going on in your life that day, you, like you worked or you had school, um, whatever. And so we give you 24 hours, but you, you are responsible for the sidewalk in front of your house. So uh, I'm trying, you know how I try not to laugh sometimes when we're talking and my eyes start to water. So I, I had a friend up from Philadelphia and I said the sidewalk, because I live on the corner and the sidewalk needs to be shoveled 24 hours after a snowstorm. And I was telling him this and I, and he goes, oh, so you don't have to shovel till April. Cause every time I'm here, it just keeps snowing and snowing. Well, and snowing. <laughs> you, you almost could make that argument sometimes. So um, we, we had a question the other night about when, it, we, when we had our board meeting Thursday night, it was snowing pretty bad. And so the question came up about um, Beaville Express, um, the lunch program and Canton Woods how how do you know if they're open or closed? So as it was explained by Ruth Troy, um, if it's Beaville Express is impacted by, um, let me think here, which one is which? Um, I guess Beaville, if Beaville schools are closed, there's no Beaville Express. Okay. If Syracuse schools are closed, there's no senior lunch because I'm assuming the same people provide lunch to the schools and that's their big one. So they wouldn't do it. 
And if the village of Baldwinsville offices are closed, so is Canton Woods. Okay. So it, it gives people an idea. I, didn't, I can't remember the last time Village Hall was closed. I mean, we've had some days where we we've closed early because it was really getting bad and we wanted people to get home. I think we might have had a few days where it opened late because it just took a while to, you know, to get some of the side streets hadn't been cleaned as good and, and, and people had to clear their cars off and that kind of stuff. Uh, but generally that's a good rule of thumb that the senior center is open. If the village hall is open, the, uh, and you know, if, if you have any question, you always can call village hall and they usually know what's going on. Uh, they are the information center of the world and, <laughs> If you the talk, world. <laughs> if talk to Maureen sometime and I'm sure Rosemary from days gone by that they would tell you that they get calls about everything. And many of them have nothing to do with the village. Um, they have to do with business, certain businesses. When do they open? Blah, blah, blah. But everybody thinks the village knows. And it's funny. They do have a pretty good idea on most things because um, they've, they've been around enough to know. Um Let's see here. What else we might have? Oh, I was going to congratulate the wood. I guess they were the the uh, winner of the uh, the food big part of the big chill. The, yep, best in bowl. So that was nice. Was nice. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and you know, I I've not eaten there yet, but I've heard great things about it. So that's that's nice to hear. Um, and they're not in the village, but they, a lot of people from the village go there and eat. And, and, and we like to hear good things, heard good things about the Big Chill. And uh, I've just been very happy to hear every time we something goes on that it, it seems to go good. And it's a nice break for people to say, okay, we still have two months basically of winter, but we're on the downhill side now because we've had the Big Chill. Uh, and so that's good. Um, we did get our contract from the county for the Main Street facade grant. I, at least I've signed it. It has gone to the county. And when we get the county executive to sign it and they send it back to us, then we can get everybody going uh, with the new Main Street one. Uh, again, people are having trouble getting contractors for uh, the last go around. Um, we're still hard you know unless you're unless you catch somebody at the right time and they're they're, they're just overwhelmed with business um i who was i talking oh i i had to go down to beaver supply the other day and pick up some salt to throw up on the roof so the ice would break up and uh, the owner came out to say hi because we were loading up the back of the vehicle and so i said uh, how was your christmas business, you know, I point, you know, for the trees and stuff. And he said, well, I'm going to tell you in 2020, he said with COVID, we had our best Christmas ever because people were more excited about decorating. And so they, you know, they wanted to even went to real trees instead of using artificial and they wanted wreaths and all kinds of stuff. And uh, he said, so I, we all, we just kind of said it can't, this will be our best ever. I can't get better than that. And he said, the Christmas we just had 2021 was better. He said in, in the January of this year, we're way ahead of the best January we've ever had. Wow. He said, the people of Baldwinsville are so loyal and the COVID was good to us. Um, he said, people got pets that didn't have pets before. And uh, he said, the hard part is, is can we keep getting stuff that we need to sell to people because the yeah. suppliers are, are running low. Uh, but it's, he was, I mean, his eyes were really lit up, like couldn't believe how well they had been doing. And I know Jason, the son had told me before uh, that it, he was just overwhelmed by the, the support from the village and in his surrounding areas, not just the village, but, but they consider themselves the village and, and, uh, all the stuff that was going on, people were buying stuff from them. I'm sure the hardware store would probably say a similar story if I was down there talking to them. Um, it's, it's crazy. I mean, our businesses have thrived, but because they know 
how to work. I mean, they, 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 I'm guessing that they made more stuff available, more product. They had, maybe they kept the stores open longer, that type of stuff. Uh, but it's great to hear because, you know, you worry about some of the businesses and it doesn't seem, I don't hear from too many people that they're going to be putting closed signs up on their windows. Um, but they're, they're at, a lot of them are looking for help. They need more help. So if you're looking for jobs, almost every place in Baldwinsville is hiring. Um, well, Orange and Olive, which is, um, if you're talking about Ace Hardware, they're, if you're looking at Ace Hardware, they're located right now over to the right. Well, they did so well in their small space. They've only been open a year or so. They opened during COVID. They're actually moving to a larger location, asking for more vendors to come in. So um, not just are people staying open, but to your point, they're thriving and, you know, in the community supporting them. So now, is that why all state moved to give them more space? No, no, they're actually moving um, to the other side of ACE. And I don't have all the details because I've been in, um, you know, different wearing a different hat a lot lately because the real estate market has just been a little bit crazy. So I'm a little out of the loop with the community thing. So I apologize. But uh, somebody just told me that the other day. And um, and I know this because one of my friends who's a vendor is actually one of the peop new people that's going over in Orange and Olive. So and I, I don't know if you've been in there yet, but you want to talk about great closing gifts, things like that. I, I pop in there all the time. It's a great little store. Huh. And that's those are the kind of things that I hope we see more of. And we I know we have them over at, at Olive's, you know, and that in the old house over there that used to be Judge Sawyer's house. Um, that that'll throw up. That's a little history lesson. <laughs> I see. I didn't know that, but. <laughs> I don't know. I never knew Judge Sawyer, but every time we would go by, my father would say, that's where Judge Sawyer was right there. So uh, and I'm sure my father as a kid probably knew where all the judges were. Um, but um, they have they have nice mm -hmm. supply of, or, or variety is what I'm trying to say of gift stuff. And now this place has similar, you know, di you know similar but different. Taste. Exactly. Similar, but but different. So if you're looking for jewelry, purses, uh, fancy clothes, I mean, a great boutique clothing store is in all of. So it's just so it's a little they complement each other. Basically, yeah. it, it's nice. That is really nice. Uh, very exciting again to see positive things like that in the village and just hoping we see more of that. A um, couple traffic light situations. The traffic light at Downer and Frawley has been blinking. People interested in why and why doesn't the village fix it? Well, that's not a village traffic light that belongs to the drugstore or whoever owns the drugstore right there. It was put up by Eckerd years ago. Um, and the question is, do they want to spend the money to fix it? Somebody thought maybe they should leave it on blinking because all the traffic is on Downer Street anyways. And so now they don't have to stop. Um Apparently, it was a merchandising ploy. If, if you had to stop at the light, you might look over and realize, oh, geez, there's a drugstore. I got to pick up something. I got to get some cough syrup. So I might as well go here. I'm at stop at the light anyways. Um, whether that works or not, I, I have no idea. Um, but that's apparently why it was put there. And they were talking about maybe just turning it off. You know, Chuck was concerned that if it's now it's just sitting there, it's a hazard if, if the wind ever broke it loose and it, the light fell, it could, you know, somebody could get hurt. Uh, so we're, we are working on trying to get that taken care of. And then um, it was pointed out uh, by Trustee Dryden at the board meeting the other night that if you're going right by your house, that light, if you're coming down the hill towards the village, the light turns green going into the village before it turns green going up the hill. It's like about a four or five second delay. Nobody seemed to know if it was intentional. You know, maybe they're going to make it a left turn, you know, give you a five second advance to turn left, but usually put an arrow up if that's happening. So the chief was going to check with the DOT and I, I forgot to ask him if he had found out. I, I did see coming through yesterday, yesterday or the day before, that there was a delay because I was coming north up the hill and the cars on the other side started to move. The first car came through and the second car wanted to turn. And they weren't sure because they figured if I got a green light, I'm going to come. But I still had red. Yeah. So it's, it's well, confusing. And, and I turn right at that so I can go right on red. But if they have a green light coming and they want to go left on theirs, I definitely think 
well, you know, now I have a personal interest, right? Not just a community interest. <laughs> but it's nice if you know coming up that if you turn right on red, that the car coming the other way may be turning left. Yeah. You, you I don't know. They must have the right of way because when you turn right on red, you're like, the, you have the last step in a right of way. Right. Um, and uh, you wouldn't know that they had a green, that you wouldn't know that like, they were turning green. There usually That's is a sign up there that the, the other direction has an advanced arrow. So mm -hmm. you know that. So if people notice it, just so that they know we, we've noticed it and we're checking with the state DOT to find out if they're, if that's intentional or if something just is a little bit awry and it's off by four or five seconds and they'll have to fix it. I so, wonder if that happened when the crosswalks went in. Just, cur you know, kind of curious. Is that new crosswalk walk, the blinking ones that talk that went mm -hmm. in a little while ago? I wonder if it's be just curious, right? If the timing. Sure. I'm gonna add tie into that somehow. It makes you, it does make you think that um, because it's kind of coincidental and coincidence. Uh, not a lot of people believe in coincidence. Um, good news. St. Mary's will be having their annual Lenten fish dinners. And if you've never eaten their fish dinners, I mean, they have all variety of different things that you can get uh, starting March 4th, 11th, 18th, 25th, April 1st and April 8th. They came to the board and asked for if they could, uh, they, they sell alcohol. You can get beer with your dinner. Um, the chief has always written a letter saying he has no problem with it. Now the state has asked for the municipality to also have a motion resolution to okay it. So we did that the other night. And, you know, that's been a staple for years, uh, great fish dinners. And uh, so people who, who wonder, you know, some of those things are starting to show up. Um, let's see that sheet I'm done with that sheet I'm done with. Uh, just a reminder to people that overnight parking is through April 15th, even though it might start getting a little nicer out. Uh, they're still, they enforce it because we do get snowstorms in late March. And if you're parking on the street, it's a problem removing snow. Again, the newsletter is on our ballinsville.org and it's on our Facebook site. We got all that stuff in it about those little, when does it end? When does it start? When does brush pickups so that Chuck said he's gotten call recently for what? Do you still do brush pickup? So, uh, not right now. Um, we're done picking up Christmas trees until spring. If there's a couple of them left, we'll probably pick them up. But um, with the snow, there's no way any of that stuff can get done. So, um, and I see the governor has lifted the mask mandate. I'm not 100% sure if that's immediate or if it's there's a date when that goes into effect because I just saw something before I came to talk with you. Uh, it does not apply to schools. It was in the headline said, you know, businesses uh, don't have to have a mask mandate. And so I would say to people, if you're not sure, have a mask with you just in case. I don't know if, if for instance, Wegmans decides they want to keep the mask. You have to wear a mask when you come in. It's their requirement, not the state. I, I don't know if they can do that or not. So be prepared until we get through. It'll be a little confusing at first. Um, I don't know about if medical offices apply. Check I think medical, you probably still need to have the mask on. That's what um, the last time I went and spoke to my doctor, he thinks that's going to be probably one of the last things, if ever, to get lifted. Yeah, but. so so it's good news for people to know that maybe they can go into their favorite restaurant, not have to wear a mask. Uh, I wouldn't be surprised. I mean, I read a story today that that uh, if you have a mask on and nobody else does, it still is offering you some protection and it's offering them some protection that, that you might, if you're sick, you might not give it to them. And uh, so... Everybody has their own feelings on what works and what doesn't. And I, I hope people are tolerant of the fact that if you see somebody with a mask on and you don't think you need to wear a mask, that's fine. It's their business if they want to wear it. And, you know, somebody had a thing on Facebook. Why do people wear a mask driving in their car? Who are they protecting themselves from? I said, I got to be honest with you. I've, I've been to a place, you know, go to Beaver Supply, the hardware store, or whatever, have a mask on. When I all of a sudden I've gone three blocks and I still have the mask on because I kind of forgot it's there. 
doesn't make me a problem child. Just means, maybe, well, it could be, but, <laughs> and sometimes, you know, you're going to another place. Sometimes it's more of a pain to put it, take it off and put it back on and get it fit right. So you, if you, you're going to the hardware store, now you're going to go to the diner or you're going to go to pay your insurance or something to the bank, go to the bank. And you just leave it on rather than take yeah. it off. I mean, some people it I doesn't. I can add to that. I can add that because when I'm wearing the tassel cap with the little ball on the top of it, uh -huh. And I put the mask on. It's sometimes it's a pain if I'm going, like you said, to Ace, to Beeville Supply, to you know, just be bopping around to take it off to, to figure out how to put my hat back one over top of it. So I've gotten picked on a couple times with my friends that have driven past me with my hat and my mask and my eyes. <laughs> I'm like, hey, it made my life easier for a short period of time to just keep it on. So <laughs> you know, it's like a lot of things. We don't we don't like what every necessarily what everybody else does. It's their life. I mean, if they feel safer, that's their business. Let's let's all be nice to each other. Let's, I do have one question from the beginning of our show. Okay. Um, uh, your wife said the time for the Memorial Day parade has changed. Is that right, or we have to wait till it gets closer to the parade to know for sure? I don't know. I, I haven't heard anything about a time. Okay. Um, I do know that there that is on a Monday this year, which is makes it harder for them to plan because everybody else always goes on Monday. We oh, go yeah. on the, the real Memorial Day and it happens to fall on Monday. So there's only so many bands that play and there's 52 parades. So we're not going to get all of them, but hopefully we'll get the Beeville band and, and a few of those type of things. And uh, we'll have some fire trucks and we'll have some old cars and we'll have some old mayors walking and, um, and people will get out and enjoy the parade. And, and I was saying to Linda Ross the other day that that it wouldn't be a bad idea for people to think about if you're if you're sitting up setting up for the parade and there's 30 people shoulder to shoulder, well maybe go down 10 feet where there's nobody. And you know, you know, outdoors is supposed to be much safer than indoors and that kind of stuff. But if you're if you're not right on top of each other, that's even better. And and I'll, I'll tell you, as having walked the route. You know, I don't know. I probably walked the parade a dozen times and there's always spots that are like a half a block. There's nobody there at all because it's maybe in the sun or maybe there's it's not quite as comfortable a spot to be. But, but there are places along the parade. Right now, the four corners is packed. They're eight, ten deep in the street because that's, you know, the, the curve and you get to see the parade coming up Genesee Street and turning. It's a nice spot. That's where my parents used to stand for years and uh, but there's got to be some places where you can go like on the usually the bridge is not full um, I, don't, I think it's disconcerting for people to stand on the bridge because when the heavy vehicles go the bridge <laughs> bounces a little bit people whoa <laughs> are we going down Nelly um, <laughs> and so I would just say to people find a nice spot where you can set up and you're not right on top of people and that would make it even safer and more calm. I, if I were sitting there, I would appreciate somebody not sitting like right behind me or shoulder to shoulder with me. Give, give us a couple feet space in between. It would just seem to make more sense. Um, our senior center has been going full speed. Um, and uh, Ruth wanted me to remind people they do have some test kits, you know, a handful for seniors who, who go to the center and seniors specifically, if you want them, stop over and, and ask. You know, each kit has two. So if you're a single person, that gives you two different times you can test. Or if you're a couple, at least you can each test. Um, Valentine's Day, which is Monday, the activity committee has treats for all the seniors. So if you come in at the senior center on Monday after 11 or starting at 11, They'll have a little treat for you, um, brighten up your day. I remember they did that last year. It was a drive up and it was very nice. Um, tomorrow, 1.30 to 2.30 is puzzle giveaway day. So people who take puzzles over and drop them off, they end up with a big stockpile. That, you know, people occasionally come and get a puzzle or two anyways, but now they got a big supply from the winter. <coughs> So feel free to stop over, and I don't know what the limits are, but at least pick up a puzzle and, and maybe more, um, and a chance to see some that maybe you've never seen before. 
chance to get out of the house. 1.30 to 2.30 at the Senior Center. The cardio ball drumming. Someday I'm going to try that one. Friday mornings at 9.30. That's the I big think I think when you do that one, you should invite me over to go live so everyone can see you do it. Okay. I, I'll make sure I it's an out, outside activity so people can just drive by the center and I can be out. That's for people who don't know. That's that's the big workout ball that you use in some, you know, gym centers and stuff. And then you have a set of drumsticks and they play music and you play the drums on the ball. And I guess you probably have to hold it with your legs so it doesn't bounce away. And so, so your whole body's involved in it, but it's cardio. You, 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 going and it gets you breathing, gets your lungs working and your heart working and you're not, you don't move a step. That's kind of cool. Um, I hope that somewhere along the way, maybe Heart Home Community would do something or Pack B would go over and tape it. It would be kind of cool to watch it. Well, um, I think Cindy's with us because she was picking on you for your really old mayor comment. So Cindy's watching. <laughs> <laughs> that is a great, especially, you know, Pack Pack B. She's always looking for something to go and add to that, that channel. Well, Cindy would know. Because she was talking about older people. And I said, you realize we are older people? <laughs> well, but but not really. You know, she's not quite ready to concede that she's an older people. Um, Love but, her. But I'll tell you what, if you watched her and followed her around, you would feel like old people. Trying oh, to keep yeah. She makes old. me feel old. Absolutely. Oh, gosh. She's like, we'll meet for breakfast. She's like, oh, I just came from Zumba. <laughs> I get oh so worn God. out just talking with her because she's everywhere. I mean, she, and then I'm going to go hit and I'm going to dip, 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 dip. And she's always been that way. I mean, she said always had more energy than 10 people combined. And um, I say, God bless her. I wish I had her energy. Um, but I, I guess this will be a break for her because they've, they've, uh, she's a big uh, Zumba person and they have not been doing Zumba because of, the mask mandate partially because it's very hard to do Zumba with a mask on your face because it's, it's a lot of cardio breathing and stuff. And so they backed down. People were concerned about getting COVID and, um, and I could see where they might say the state says you don't have to require a mask, but we are going to still ask you to mask up and people should be prepared for that. I, I, I assume I've not read the details, but my assumption is, We've now taken it away from it's a state mandate to it's an individual mandate. So if Shelly Hoffman wants to say, people coming into my business, I want you to wear a mask. I guess you have the right to do that. Yeah. So. Well, in, in my industry, we wear we wear the masks, obviously. I, I think it you know depends on what um, what the comfort level is. But, you know, and sometimes it's just a, it's a respect thing, too, when you're going to other people's houses. You know, or you're showing other people houses, taking buyers through. Sure. You want to make sure that you have the masks and. Um, and, and I can't tell you, people are so respectful when it comes to that kind of stuff. So it hasn't been an issue at all. Yeah, I haven't heard much around here. You hear it in other places where, you know, people are boycotting businesses that are requiring masks. And I've not heard that here. Um, maybe we're a little more. We've always had a smart community. I've always thought we were smarter than most other communities. And so maybe people are just. You know, hey, what does it cost you to put a mask on for 20 minutes if you're in a store? I mean, come on. So um, whatever that is, I think that's about all I have, Shell. I mean, I got little things, but, you know, I think we've covered the big stuff. Um, just remind people that if they have any questions at all, call Village Hall at 635-3521 if you need to talk to me. Um, if you have questions, they'll get you to the DPW. They'll get you to the police. Um, hopefully, things are starting to quiet down a little bit. Um, and maybe it, someday it'll be in, the end will be in sight and we won't have reason to do this every other week. I do like the fact that we're doing it on the week opposite when we have our board meetings. Because then oh. that's... So we had a meeting on Thursday, then you and I on Wednesday, then the following Thursday. So it's like each week I'm able to get messages out about the taxes, about this stuff. So if we can keep doing that, that will work great. Yeah, that's um, well, like I said, the flexibility with me in case have, people haven't figured it out for those watching it on Facebook. Sometimes we're 11, sometimes we're one. We're almost always on a Wednesday, though. So. Yeah, and, and I, I'm I'm flexible and this shows over and over again so that people can watch it on, at their leisure 
when it's not live. And I, I really hope that that people hear something that you know, almost everybody hears something that applies to them and makes things a little easier. Um, we've it's been you know Lord knows it's been difficult. Um, and if we can make it just a little bit easier, one less thing that you got to fight through, uh, we've done our job. So and I, again, hats off to you for this forum. Um, and I keep telling Chuck McAuliffe, I think he'd be great sitting down with you someday because Chuck, Chuck has worked as a dispatcher for the police department. He was very active in the fire department. He was in the DPW. Then he was a foreman. Ran the water, you know, ran the water department, and now he's a superintendent. He's really been in every phase of the village, other than being like a clerk. I mean, we, we did work for the cops, so he wasn't a cop particularly, but he was dispatching. He's got great stories that some of which he can probably tell, and some of which he probably can't. But um, he has so much pride in our village that things. I mean, he'll say. Yeah, I walked up there to see how it was going, you know, and it looked like a lot of people, like when we have our Margarita Fest and stuff, he might not participate, but he'll walk around to see if it, and, and people will go, oh, the flowers are beautiful, or, you know, and he likes to hear that kind of stuff. Um, so. Well, I saw him the Saturday of the big chill and the poker run, and I tried hitting him up again to come on, come on the show with me. He just smiles. <laughs> He just, every time I need something, I have a question. He answers me immediately. He's always, you know, Johnny on the spot. But when I ask him to come on here, he just says, oh, the mayor can can answer the questions. <laughs> I, but I think I'll, I'm going to keep working on him because I think it would be really, I think people would get a kick out of of what he's seen over the years. Yeah, um, yeah. And uh, the people he's worked with, the different mayors and police chiefs and fire chiefs. And uh, I mean, he's been through it all. Um and if he doesn't want to talk, I'm not, I'm not going to pressure him, but I just I think. <laughs> <laughs> well, you have a good one. Nice. We'll see you in two weeks. Okay. Nice. Sounds good. Bye, Mayor.